Hello and welcome to Bust or Trust, a kids mystery podcast. I'm Tiernan. And I'm Athena. Bust or Trust is the podcast where we unravel the world's greatest mysteries with help from you, our chief detectives. We present all the best evidence and then ask you to decide which team are you on. Are you a myth buster like me? Or are you a myth truster like me? We look into all sorts of strange stories from around the world. No mystery is too big for us. Like, why do they call it having a cold when your temperature goes up? That's a good question. Maybe because if it was called a hot, then everyone would try to catch one in the winter, and that would be terrible. Very good point. Let's definitely not make it cool to sneeze on people. Cool or, or hot? Anyway, we tell you at the end of the show just how to get in touch so you can let us know if you're on Team Buster or the best one, Team Truster. So, Chief Detectives, get ready to take notes and start putting together your case while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. The Case Uh, Hi, hi, Athena. I'm ready for today's case. You look blue with cold, Tiernan. Why are you just in a t-shirt and shorts? It's freezing today. Because we're looking at the case of the Jersey Devil, obviously. And I didn't know if it just went for people in jerseys or also sweaters, jumpers and hoodies. So I didn't risk any of them. No, Tiernan. As in South Jersey, in the state of New Jersey, USA. And I don't think the Jersey Devil cares if its victims are wearing knitwear or not. It's a strange and scary creature that's said to live in the forest and make high-pitched, blood-curdling screams. So, so, so I, can, I can put my jumper on again? Yeah, definitely. Oh, thank goodness. Ah, that's much better. I was certain it was like a Jersey potato. You know, the type of potato that wears a little jumper, whereas a jacket potato wears a little coat. Yeah, I think being cold got to your brain, Tiernan. Let's tell the chief detectives all about the case and it might help you warm up a little bit. Good plan. The Jersey Devil, or as it's also known, the Leeds Devil, is said to live in the forests of South Jersey, USA. South Jersey is in the northeast of the USA and is known for its amazing beaches, saltwater taffy, which is a very chewy soft candy, and the Pine Barrens, where the spooky Jersey Devil is said to live. The Pine Barrens is extra special because it's the last big place with a unique kind of forest called the Atlantic Pine Ecosystem. The local legend of the Jersey Devil started in the 1700s and most people who say they've seen it have reported that it looks like a cross between a kangaroo and a goat with large bat-like wings. It has small arms with large claws, its feet are cloven and it has a pointed tail. It's also said to have a strange long body. It can move very quickly and has a terrifying scream. It's said that the devil is the 13th child of a local resident called Jane Leeds, also known as Mother Leeds, born in the Pine Barrens in South Jersey, USA. After having 12 children and finding out she was pregnant again, she cursed the child and said it would be the devil. On a stormy night, the baby was born, and while it seemed normal at first, it then transformed into the Jersey Devil and flew up the chimney and out into the forest. Another version of the story says Mother Leeds was a witch and the child's father was the devil himself. People do really believe the Jersey Devil exists and there have been sightings of it from the 1700s up until very recently. It has become part of South Jersey's identity and there were two ice hockey teams named after it as well as a very large roller coaster at a famous theme park. The Jersey Devil has also featured in a number of television shows and games, but there is still no concrete evidence to prove that it actually exists. So, Chief Detectives, it's up to you to work out if the Jersey Devil really lives in the Pine Barrens of South Jersey and what kind of knitwear it does actually prefer. Um, They don't need to decide on the knitwear. Is that because we all know the Devil Wears Prada? (laughs) No, Tiernan, that was just a film. Our Chief Detectives only have to decide if the Jersey Devil is real, which it isn't. Well, I see the devil's already pulled the wool over your eyes, Athena. Oh, no. On to the first devilish piece of evidence. First piece of evidence. The first bit of evidence is the many, many, and I mean many, sightings of the Jersey Devil over hundreds of years. Even though the story goes that the Jersey Devil was born somewhere around the year 1735, the first time anyone reported seeing the creature was in 1820. 
several New Jersey farmers, including Joseph Bonaparte, who was indeed the brother of the French emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, all reported an animal of the same description as the Jersey Devil flying over the Bonaparte estate and preying on the farm animals. A few years later, a farmer in the same area of New Jersey shot and killed a strange flying creature, and when the body was shown to locals, none of them could match its features to any animal they knew. From 1840 to 1841, the Jersey Devil was blamed for the deaths of a lot of farm livestock. Strange hooved tracks were discovered, and people reported hearing loud, high-pitched screams just before the animals were found. A Jersey newspaper in 1887 described sightings of the Jersey Devil, or as they called it then, the Devil of Leeds, and quoted an army colonel who said, That thing is not a bird, nor an animal. Then in January 1909, newspapers published stories from hundreds of witnesses from all over South Jersey and Philadelphia, who said they'd encountered the Jersey Devil. One said that it had attacked a tram and a social club. Another said that police in Pennsylvania had tried to shoot it, but the Jersey Devil wasn't harmed at all. Panic spread across northeastern America, even causing schools to close and workers to stay at home. Groups of people set out to find and stop the creature, and it was rumoured that the Philadelphia Zoo offered a $10,000 reward for anyone who managed to catch it. All those sightings and stories also meant there were a lot of hoaxes, including some people who made a Jersey Devil using a stuffed kangaroo with fake claws and wings. It's another example of a moral panic, when masses of people get scared of something despite there being no evidence for it. There's no way of telling if any of those witnesses in the newspaper had ever actually seen strange creatures at all. That's true, but what's really interesting is that with most moral panics, once things finally settle down, the story usually ends there. But sightings of the Jersey Devil just kept on happening. In 1925, a farmer in the Greenwich Township area shot an animal that was attacking his chickens. He took a photo of the body and no one could identify what sort of animal it was. In 1951, a group of boys in Jersey claimed to have seen the Jersey Devil, and in 1960, in Mays Landing, Jersey, hoof tracks were found and high-pitched screams were heard. This creature has been spotted again and again, with the last known sighting being around 2015, when a man called David Black captured a winged creature on camera, and he swears the image wasn't tampered with. The photo clearly shows the silhouette of a half-bird, half-animal flying through the trees. Oddly enough, nine miles away on the same day, someone took video footage of a very similar creature. So how can there be this many sightings of the Jersey Devil if it doesn't exist? And just how could any normal creature live for so many years? Even with all these sightings, no hard evidence for the Jersey Devil has ever been found. In fact, many of the sightings themselves are hard to prove, and experts have looked at the images from the photos and videos taken in 2015, and they aren't convinced at all. The Humane Society is an animal welfare and protection charity, and Jeff Brunner, the executive director, has said that he thinks sandhill cranes are the cause of many of the Jersey Devil stories. Sandhill cranes are large, tall birds with long legs and necks. Brunner said, There are no photographs, no bones, no hard evidence whatsoever, and worst of all, no explanation of its origins that doesn't require belief in the supernatural. But while sandhill cranes aren't common in South Jersey, they have been known to accidentally migrate there on occasion. They are the same size as a Jersey Devil is meant to be. They make a sound that some might say is a high-pitched scream, and their appearance would probably startle any local residents that weren't expecting them, especially at night time. If our chief detectives remember one of our previous cases on the Mothman, it seems sandhill cranes might be responsible for spooking quite a few people across America. Oh, I see, Athena. Usually in our cases, you blame the mystery on bears. And because bears can't fly, I guess now it's all the fault of sandhill cranes, is it? If they aren't that common in the New Jersey area, how can they be responsible for every single Jersey Devil sighting? Especially in 1909, when there were a lot of incidents. Uh, well, I never said it wasn't bears, but whilst not every sighting was likely a sandhill crane, fear can often lead people to imagine they've seen something strange. All it would have taken was one sandhill crane and the moral panic that followed might have caused many people to see something they thought was odd. 
American naturalist and author Tom J. Brown spent several seasons living in the Pine Barrens wilderness, and he said there were a number of times hikers had thought he was a Jersey Devil just because he'd put mud in himself to deter mosquitoes. Yeah, well, that's just ridiculous. The Jersey Devil obviously doesn't look like a mud-covered man. He's more of a weird llama go- kangaroo wing thingy, maybe. Those hikers had it all wrong. And anyway, there might not be physical proof of the Jersey Devil, but as you'll see in piece of evidence number two, there's definitely historical proof. Second piece of evidence. The second piece of evidence, and this is an important one, is that the Leeds family from the story of how the Jersey Devil came to be actually existed in New Jersey in the 1700s. The Jersey Devil was said to be the cursed 13th child of a woman known as Mother Leeds, and historians say that could well have been someone called Deborah Leeds, so not Jane Leeds as the story says. Her husband, Jaffet Leeds, named 12 children in the will he wrote in 1736, and the family lived in the exact area that the Jersey Devil is said to have come from. They were Quakers, which is a Protestant Christian group, and it's thought that either Deborah or Jaffet Leeds cursed their 13th child themselves, causing it to become the Jersey Devil and fly off into the Pied Barrens. Another version of the story suggests that a local clergyman, frustrated by Deborah Leeds' refusal to convert from Quakerism to another type of Christianity, cursed her, declaring that her next child would be the devil's offspring. That's not a very nice thing to do. I thought being a clergyman would mean you'd have to do kind acts. Well, maybe he thought it was kind. I mean, nobody knows anything about Deborah Leeds' other children, do they? But the Jersey Devil is famous. That clergyman basically made them a celeb. I'm not sure it's that great a celeb. I mean, it doesn't even get photographed very well. Even though the Leeds family really lived in New Jersey at the time, it looks like they weren't the ones who started the legend of the Jersey Devil. Daniel Leeds was a New Jersey politician and a political rival to Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States who helped America gain its independence. Daniel Leeds made a book called An Almanac that had things like astrology, magic and mysterious ideas in it. Some Christian groups didn't like this and said it was disrespectful to their religion. The Quakers even called the Leeds family evil because of the book. When Daniel Leeds died, his son Titan Leeds took over and their book became so popular it began to compete with one published by his rival, Benjamin Franklin. Franklin wrote a pretend astrological article in his publication that predicted the death of Titan Leeds and started a big rivalry between the two books. Franklin wrote that Titan Leeds had definitely died, just like he said he would, and any sightings of him were actually sightings of his ghost. People think that Franklin's stories about Titan's ghosts haunting the Pine Barrens, along with the Quakers not liking the Leeds family, helped create the legend of the Jersey Devil. Plus, Daniel Leeds had nine children, which was a lot back then, and they all lived in the area where people said the Jersey Devil appeared. Later on, Titan Leeds put the family crest in the book, and it showed a wyvern, which is a creature that looks like a dragon with bat wings and stands on two legs. This is similar to the Jersey Devil, so you can see how the story might have started. But the Leeds family had 12 or maybe 13 children, just like in the story about the origin of the Jersey Devil. So the tale might well have come from them too. And there's still one final piece of evidence to help prove that something does haunt those woods. Third piece of evidence. The third piece of evidence is that the Pine Barrens are a very unique location, which means it's very possible something unexplained does live deep in the forest and hasn't yet been discovered. The Pine Barrens area stretches across more than seven counties in New Jersey and is the largest remaining ecosystem of its kind. It's full of rare plants and trees that can be found in few other places. At one point, parts of the area were used for industry, but over time, the forest actually reclaimed these places, and so within the trees are very strange ghost villages. The area is a reserve, and very few people live within the Pine Barrens itself. The Jersey Devil isn't the only creature that's said to live there. There's also the ghost of a pirate captain named Captain Kidd, a spooky ghost dog called the Black Dog, and another ghost known as the Black Doctor. Plus, there's an abandoned area called the Blue Hole, which people say is bottomless and has strong currents that can drown anyone who swims there. So, there's every chance a creature like the Jersey Devil could survive in such a place. Yeah, it could, but even though the Pine Barrens is a big area of wilderness, nearly a million people live there. Lots of tourists have visited the area, and you can pay to go on horse rides and hunting trips there. 
even the blue hole that has spooky tales about it is a really popular place for swimming in the summer. Areas of nature have always got spooky stories about them, probably because they can get very dark at night and will be full of all sorts of sounds of wildlife. None of that proves that it's home to the Jersey Devil. Poor Jersey Devil. It really can't catch a break. First it gets turned into a weird devil creature, and now it doesn't even get to say the Pine Barrens is its home. You're right. It didn't ask to get turned into a strange goat bat thingy. It isn't fair at all. Why does everyone have to do such nasty curses? Imagine if the Jersey Devil had been cursed to turn into something much nicer. You, my beautiful baby boy. I curse your child to become a devil. Devil? Well, that's no help to me at all. Can't you curse him to become something else? Uh, like what? Well, all my other 12 children, they really want a puppy. A puppy? Oh, okay. Um, I curse your child to be a puppy. Cute, isn't he? But thinking about it, I bet the kids won't clean up after him or take him for walks, and I'll have to do it. I've changed my mind. You can't just change your mind about a curse. Oh, what about a plumber? We really need someone to fix our toilet. It's a curse. It's meant to be something you don't need. Please, we keep having to flush it three or four times to make it work. Okay, okay. I curse your child to become a, a, a plumber. It's a me, a plumber. Our toilet's free there, thanks. Okie dokie. It's a fix, now what do I do? You must stay in the Pine Barrens forever. But there's no more of toilets here. Oh, good point. I don't need a plumber. Oh, can I have another go? No, it's a curse. What about something easy? Like what? Oh, I've worked very hard this year. I've got 12 kids to look after. I deserve a medal. I came here to curse you, not give you a medal. Oh, please, with sugar syrup and sprinkles on top. Well, as you've asked nicely, I curse your child, a plumber, to become a medal. Oh, how nice and shiny. Wait, where's it going? It flew up the chimney. They say there's something weird in these woods, you know, so keep your eye out whilst we hike through it. OK, I will. What was that? Oh, what a lovely medal. You've been struck by the Jersey medal. And I think I deserve it too. Thanks, everyone. The Jersey medal sounds much better. Imagine lots of reports of people just being awarded for doing nice things. I would hope there were more children cursed so that there could be silver and bronzes for second and third place too. Otherwise, it just seems unfair. Good point. You know who always gets a gold medal in my book? Our chief detectives. And now it's time for you to decide. Does the Jersey Devil exist or not? Time to recap the evidence. Evidence recap. The first piece of evidence is the many sightings of the Jersey Devil. People have been reporting seeing the strange part goat, part kangaroo, part bat creature since the 1700s, all the way up to 2015. Including a time during 1909 when many sightings happened all within the same month. There is no physical evidence that the Jersey Devil has ever existed. Nature experts think the majority of sightings are sand cranes who have ended up in New Jersey when they become lost during migration and startled locals. The incidents in 1909 sound very much like classic moral panic when people become afraid something is threatening them and act irrationally, even though there is no evidence for it. The second piece of evidence is that the Leeds family did actually exist in history. The Jersey Devil was said to be their 13th child who was cursed, and the family were recorded to have had 12 children and lived in the area the Jersey Devil came from. But there was also another Leeds family who were publishing and political rivals to founding father Benjamin Franklin. People think that Franklin's jokes about the Leeds family, along with the local Quakers believing they were being disrespectful to religion, may have helped start the legend of the Jersey Devil. The last piece of evidence is that the Pine Barrens, the area the Jersey Devil is said to live, is a vast nature reserve with a number of folktales and legends. There's every chance a creature like the Jersey Devil could live here undiscovered. Except a lot of people do visit the Pine Barrens every year and still haven't found any evidence the Jersey Devil exists. So now we're handing it over to you, Chief Detectives. What do you think? Are you a Jersey Devil myth buster? or a Jersey Devil myth truster.
Get in touch and let us know your thoughts, and most importantly, which side you're on. I bet Team Buster will be letting out high-pitched screams when Team Truster win this one. Who the devil will want to be on Team Truster when this is an obvious Team Buster case? Send us your voice notes with an explanation of why you're a Myth Truster or Myth Buster when it comes to whether the Jersey Devil is real or not. All you have to do is ask your grown-ups to help you email us your voice notes or thoughts to hello at bustortrust.com. Tell us your name, age, what you think all the evidence means. And please, please make sure your grown-ups give us permission to use your voice notes or emails in our next episode. You can also send us a question on Spotify Q&A, but please get permission from your parents and don't include any personal details so that we can publish them safely. We won't always be able to use all of them. But we do love to hear them. And here are some thoughts from you lot, our chief detectives, on the last few episodes. Hi, my name's Matteo and I'm seven years old. I live in Jersey Channel Islands and I am a myth truster for the Bonacon. Bonacon because I think it's just a relative to some cool animals like bulls. I'm Candela, I'm nine and I'm a myth buster on the Bonacon because I think it's based on the American bison. I think this podcast is 10 out of 10. I love it. Keep going, whatever you're doing. Bye. Well, well done on their brother and sister, right? Well done on disagreeing, but nicely. I'm really impressed. I know. That's what a, what a lovely pair of siblings there. They're Maybe re- they get on better than we do. They do. Maybe they should be Team Bust or Trust. I'm very impressed, Matteo and Candela. That was that was great. But also, I really like that you say they could be a relative of some really cool animals like uh, like the bull or the bison. They are cool animals, aren't but they? But then if they're a relative, then it means it existed because it had to exist to be yeah, a relative. Yeah, and they'd be the it. awkward. Imagine having the Bonacon over for Christmas. That would be the worst relative. Oh, Just doing drama. dangerous fire poo everywhere. Here are two of our chief detectives who attended our live show about dragons. And unfortunately, we didn't get to include their comments in the main episode. So uh, have a little listen to the thoughts from Arif and Zara on that case. I always try Team Truster because training is, always makes fun stuff up. And what's your name? Uh, my name is Zara. Hello, my name is Zara and I am a buster on the case of which, um, if dragons are real or not, because if Athena isn't a goddess, then Komodo dragons aren't dragons. They are Komodo dinosaurs because they lived so long ago. Oh, you look great. You make a fantastic team. Brilliant chief detective work. Hey, Chief Detectives, we have a special Christmas episode coming up and we'd love to hear from you. Send us your voice notes on your favourite mystery from your neighbourhood. Giant foxes. A colour-changing post box. Disappearing biscuits. Actually, where did those biscuits go? Um, I, I know nothing. Or is your teacher really an alien? We want to hear your local mysteries, so send in your voice notes by the 25th of November for a chance to be in our special Christmas show. Chief Detectives, investigate now! If you enjoyed the show, please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Amazon Music or wherever you listen to your podcasts for more great episodes. We love to hear what you think, so please do rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It helps more detectives find bust or trust. And of course, we'll read out some of your comments on the show. Plus, if you pay to subscribe to Bust or Trust on Apple Podcasts or our patreon.com forward slash Bust or Trust page, then you get to hear all our bonus episodes, get our weekly newsletter, monthly colouring sheets, and we'll also give you a shout out on the show too. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time for more Bust or Trust. OK, so I didn't need my jersey to do the case of the Jersey Devil. You were right, Athena. Oh, I'm always right. But did I need this Jersey ice cream? I bought loads of it thinking that it might be useful. Uh, Well, it's from the island Jersey in the British Channel Isles, so it's not strictly anything to do with the Jersey Devil. Ah, well, I guess I'd better throw it away then. No, 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 wait, wait, I tell you what, leave them with me and I'll investigate if this ice cream is an important part of the case. I'll have all those tubs, thanks, yeah. Okay, okay, if you're sure, Athena, I'm trusting you on this, but there's one more thing. Yeah, what's that? What should I do with this Jersey cow then? Mm, Tinnan! (laughs) 